Hope you're having a good day today. It is July 9th. Our reading today is going to come from the book of Psalms. We're in Psalms. Uh, we're in Psalm 105 and 6 is our reading. We're going to be looking primarily in Psalm 106. Let's begin by just reading a few verses. Verse 1. Praise the Lord. Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Who can utter the mighty acts of the Lord? Who can declare all his praise? Blessed are those who keep justice, and he who does righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, with the favor you have toward your people. O visit me with your salvation, that I may see the benefit of your chosen ones, that I may rejoice in the gladness of your nation, that I may glory with your inheritance. We have sinned with our fathers. We have committed iniquity. We have done wickedly. Our fathers in Egypt did not understand your wonders. They did not remember the multitude of your mercies, but rebelled by the sea, the Red Sea. Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake. And it's that concept I wanted uh, us to consider today. Saving for the Lord's sake. To look at that phrase, and it appears elsewhere, needless to say, throughout Scripture, sometimes people will, will focus on that and solely on that, and certainly, and, it, and they will use it as a display of God's grace. And I don't think it's necessarily wrong to do that. He did these things, as the passage says, he saved them for his name's sake. He gets the glory. But I want you to come a little bit further in chapter 106. Come down to verse 45, and look at what we see here. Verse 45, and let's actually back up to verse 41. Uh, verse 40, the wrath of the Lord was kindled against his people. Verse 41, he gave them into the hand of the Gentiles, and those who hated them ruled over them. Their enemies also oppressed them, and they were brought into subjection under their hand. Many times he delivered them, but they rebelled in their counsel and were brought low for their iniquity. Nevertheless, he regarded their affliction when he heard their cry, and for their sake, he remembered his covenant. And I just thought it was interesting that at the beginning, it's for his sake, and here it's for their sake. And so we see both. Why does the Lord, why does the Lord save us? Why does the Lord why is the Lord so patient with us when we mess up like Israel of old messed up again and again? Why, why is the Lord like that? For his sake, the first verse, and for our sake, the latter verse. Because in both instances, he's wanting to display something. There's a reason behind it. So what might that reason be? Well, the first one, for his sake. It actually says, to back, back up to verse 8, Nevertheless, he saved them for his name's sake, that he might show his mighty power. He might make it, excuse me, he might make his mighty power known. He rebuked the Red Sea also, and it dried up. He led them through, he led them through the depths. He wasn't, he wasn't doing it because they deserved it. He was doing these things, displaying his power. Right By his mighty hand, he was leading them out. He was leading them out of Egypt. And so he's doing it for his sake. He gets the glory. Why does he get the glory? Because he's the one doing it. He's the one doing it. So it's his power. That's what it is. What else might we say? Look earlier in chapter 105. I know it's a separate chapter. But earlier in chapter 105, towards the end, look at verse 41. Verse 40. I know I always do that. I always back up. I say one verse and back up to another. The people asked, and he brought, brought quail, satisfied them with the bread of heaven. And that's talking about the manna. He opened the rock, and water gushed out. 1 Corinthians. I believe it's 1 Corinthians chapter 10, the rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. He opened the rock and water gushed out. Mm, one of the Corinthians. Don't quote me. Uh, I think it might be 2 Corinthians now that I said it. But anyway, 
He opened the rock and water gushed out. It ran in the dry places like a river, for he remembered his holy promise and Abraham his servant. He brought his people, he brought out his people with joy, his chosen ones with gladness. He remembered his promise and Abraham his servant. He's remembering the covenant. And there's another verse we'll read here in just a moment talking about the covenant. But he remembers Abraham. He, it says in another place he was doing all this not because of them, but because of someone else. They didn't deserve it. Again, that's grace. They didn't deserve it. He's remembering Abraham. The promises made to Abraham. The covenant made with Abraham. And you have the promises so you have the seed, you have the nation, you have the land. You have those things, and he's remembering those things. Back in our passage, tail end of 106 now, as we wrap up today. Tail end of 106, where it talks about, he regarded their affliction, verse 44, for he, for, and for their sake he remembered his covenant, and relented according to the multitude of his mercies. He also made them to be pitied by all those who carried them away captive. Save us, O Lord our God, and gather us from among the Gentiles to give thanks to your holy name, to triumph in your praise. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel from everlasting to, ever, to everlasting, and let all the people say, Amen. Praise the Lord. He's doing these things. He's saving them. He saves us because, frankly, the earlier passage, he brought them out with joy, with gladness. Here, he relented according to the multitude of his mercies, and he's merciful. And frankly, while it says he made, he made them to be pitied among those there, among those who carried them away, I don't think it's out of place to say that the Lord also pities us when we cry out, and, and we're just pitiful. And the Lord, is, the Lord is full of pity in that sense. And he pities us. And he has, he's merciful towards us. For an example of the Lord's mercy, all you have to think about is repentance. Peter says, and Peter's looking at it from a man's perspective. How often shall my brother sin against me and I forgive him? Seven times? What's Jesus say? Not seven. Seventy times seven. How many times has the Lord forgiven us? Why is the Lord so forgiving? Why is the Lord so merciful? Why is the Lord so gracious? It's because that's who He is. And He pities us. And so when we turn to Him, like He wants us to turn to Him, He's gracious. For His sake and for our sake. Appreciate you. Hope this study's been helpful. Hope you have a good day. Hope you join us for our next look into God's Word.